everybody, Jeff Marshall here. Uh, just wanted to do a quick little uh, video for fun. Uh, talk about some a little bit more advanced things. Uh, talked a little bit, I did a couple of videos about basic blue stuff, and uh, so and that was fun. And I hope uh, that helped some blues ideas and so on. But uh, want to get a little bit more into some more advanced type of playing uh, for all you you know shredders and all that kind of good stuff. Um, what I want to talk about today is a little bit of what uh, I refer to as superimposition. It's a technique that I use quite a bit, and it's uh, really kind of take my plan to another place over the years since I've started messing around with it. And basically, if you think about uh, the way a piano player plays, he has two hands. He can essentially play two different chords with, you know, each hand has a different chord. So with his left hand, he can play one chord, and with his right hand, he can play a, a totally different chord. And so we would kind of prefer, uh, refer to that as polychords. Uh, it's really difficult to do that on the guitar. We can do that with some chord shapes and maybe emulate it with slash chords. Uh, but I'm thinking more along the lines of lines, uh, you know, phrases and stuff like that, improvisation. Uh, but that technique can be used in that context. So, for example, if I was playing, say, over a B minor chord, um, it's relatively obvious that uh, I can play a B minor arpeggio or a B minor seventh arpeggio. <laughs> And that sounds great, don't get me wrong. Um, but also thinking about what are some other arpeggios I might be able to superimpose over the top of that uh, to get some different colorations. Um, for example, uh, one that I commonly use a lot over a minor chord is I go to the fifth of the minor chord, in this case F sharp, and I play a minor seventh arpeggio. All right. So it's real close. Here's the chord, B minor, B minor seventh. And then here's the F-sharp arpeggio. Now by using that arpeggio, uh, I get a couple of different notes. Uh, I get the C-sharp note, first of all, and that's the one that really sticks out to me. And I also get the E note, which I don't get those two notes from the B minor arpeggio. And those are color tones, those are extensions. The, the C-sharp is a nine, and the E is an 11, so it gives me like a minor 11 9 sound, if you will. So I like to combine that with maybe some scale tones or some pentatonic stuff or some blues licks or something like that. But you can hear that you actually get a different coloration out of that sound. Okay, so uh, the shape that I'm playing there, uh, I'm just you can just try this over a B minor chord. Is I'm starting from the F sharp tone uh, as the root, and I'm playing the minor third A on the twelfth fret. The F sharp is on the ninth fret of the A string. The A is on the twelfth fret, and then the fifth is on the eleventh fret of the D string. The flat seven is on the ninth fret of the G string. That's one octave of an F sharp minor seventh arpeggio. Now the top octave, I just start here an F sharp on the eleventh fret of the G string. I go to the minor third, which is on the tenth fret of the B string, and the fifth is on the high E string on the ninth fret, and then the flat seven again is on the twelfth fret of the high E string. So a pretty easy arpeggio to play. Remember, I'm playing that over the B minor chord. Now, the reason why this works, and I'll go into a little bit of light theoretical things, I guess, is basically they're both in the same key. Uh, if you were to take a B minor scale or a B Dorian minor or whatever, um, in this case, I'll, I'll refer to it as B Dorian minor. Uh, B Dorian minor is really a mode of the A major scale. So when you're playing a B Dorian minor scale, you're really just playing major scale. And in the key of A you have a series of chords. You have an A major 7th, B minor 7th, C sharp minor 7th, D major 7th, E dominant 7, and an F sharp minor 7, lo and behold. You also have a G, minor, a G sharp minor 7 flat 5. So all those chords are made from that scale. So A major has its chords, therefore B Dorian would have the same chords essentially. 
So uh, by playing the F sharp over the top of it, I'm not deviating from the key that I'm originally in. I'm just getting different colorations. So a really easy way, and, that, and that's kind of the science behind it, but a really easy way is once you work out all that uh, scientific theoretical stuff, um, the easiest thing to do is just think about where that is in relationship to the chord that's being played. So if I play a B minor chord here, or even just a, one of these power chords, shows me where the fifth is, right? And F sharp is the fifth of B, so that arpeggio is a fifth away from the root. So if I want to get to that sound quickly, if I'm on a gig or when I'm just playing, uh, without having to think about all that theoretical stuff, which we already figured out why it works, I just want to get to it quickly. So if I was in a different key, let's say I went to the key of G minor, I don't have to think about all that theoretical stuff. All I have to do is go to the fifth and pay a minor seventh arpeggio, and, and I should be golden. All right? So that's how it works. Um, and essentially, you can use any of the arpeggios from the key of A. We're going back to our B Dorian. Key of A has a number of arpeggios, right? It has um, A major seventh, B minor seventh, C sharp minor seven. Sometimes I'll play a C sharp minor seven over the B. So here's my B minor chord. Here's a C sharp minor seven. Get some colors, a little jazzy sound. So where is that in relationship to the B? Well, it's a whole step up. So if I want to do that in a different key, if I'm playing a minor chord, I just go a whole step up and play a minor seventh arpeggio. Now that gives me different colors, of course. The C sharp over the B, for example, will give me some distinct modal type sounds of the Dorian mode. It gives me the major six against the B, which in this case is G sharp. And some other colors and extensions. So experiment with that. Uh, one other thing I like to mention is um, is to also experiment with the order of your arpeggios. Uh, a lot of folks play arpeggios from the root all the time, and certainly there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, if we all play everything from the root, then we're all playing kind of the same thing, right? So uh, I'll give you an example. If we play the F sharp minor seventh arpeggio over the B minor, a lot of times I'll start that arpeggio somewhere midway through, like I'll start it from the flat seven, which is E in this case. And you notice I didn't play it like you would normally hear an a, tech, a guitar player play an arpeggio, like a sweepy. Sometimes I do that, but you know, it's not in this consecutive order of an arpeggio, which sounds good, don't get me wrong. But by uh, arranging the order in a different way, I can actually scramble the notes up and I can actually phrase with the arpeggio. So if I'm playing... You know what I mean? So I just played the notes of the arpeggio, but it sounded more like a musical phrase. So practicing them that way is really great too. So uh, remember, superimposing sounds, right? I'll talk more about that. And if you have any questions uh, or comments, certainly by all means. And uh, if you're confused in any way, shape, or form, hit me, whatever. Maybe I can help you out. And I hope you enjoyed it. So uh, keep rocking. Have a great day.